Hello students, I hope all of you are doing great mathematics. Today, we will learn something about means, quadratic mean and arithmetic mean, using a problem from ISI BSTAT BMAT entrance. It's a very beautiful problem. I will also give you a challenge question in this particular video. As usual, if you can do the challenge question, put it in the comment section and the best commenter is usually awarded in every month. Okay? Let's get started. It's given that there are n non-negative numbers. x1, x2, up to xn. You know, the fun part is this. As soon as I see this, in my mind, the AMGM inequality, the arithmetic mean geometric mean inequality, or AMHM inequality, RMS inequality, all of these inequalities come to my mind. Because whenever you are working with non-negative numbers, whenever you are working with non-negative numbers, in general, something called the power mean inequality comes into play. We discuss this a lot in our Math Olympiad program, in our ISI CMI entrance program. If you are interested in those programs, check, in, uh, check the link in the description. But I'll explain in detail how we can solve this particular problem. It says that there are n non-negative numbers and their sum is equal to 1. Their sum is equal to 1. We have to find out the maximum value that square root of x1 plus square root of x2 up to square root of xn can take. What is the maximum value that it can attain? That's the question. So first, before we go and do this problem, let me explain something called the arithmetic mean and the quadratic mean inequality. The arithmetic mean is simply the average of the numbers. So let's say A and B are two non-negative numbers. We are dealing with non-negative numbers. Then A plus B by 2 is the average or the arithmetic mean of these two numbers. What is the quadratic mean? The quadratic mean is you square the two things, you divide it by 2 and take the square root of the entire thing. This is called the quadratic mean. So arithmetic mean is always less than or equal to the quadratic mean. This is uh, an inequality from algebra. It's widely used. Just to make sure that we understand, let's try the three variable case that is a plus b plus c by 3 the arithmetic mean of three numbers is less than or equal to square root of a square plus b square by c plus c square by 3 this is for three numbers a b and c okay so but why is this true so there are a couple of ways of thinking about this why is this true so i i check the two variable thing and as a challenge, I will ask you to do the three variable thing, okay? Or three numbers case. So, I want to show that a plus b plus by 2 is less than or equal to square root of a square plus b square by 2. So, what I'll do is I'll just simply square both sides, which, which will give me a square plus 2ab plus b square by 4 is less than or equal to a square plus b square by 2. Now, I can square both sides because both of these things are positive, okay? Alright, so next, I'll just cross multiply. So, I'll have 0 less than or equal to 2a square plus 2b square. I cross multiply this one minus a square minus 2ab minus b square. So, what is this? This is very simple. 0 is less than or equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab. 2a square minus a square is a square. 2b square minus b square is b square, right? So, a square plus b square minus 2ab, which is a minus b whole square. So, what we get is 0 is less than or equal to a minus b whole square. This is obviously true because any square number, a minus b whole square, is a square number. Any square number is greater than or equal to 0. It can never be less than 0. 
So what I just did is a very important problem solving strategy. Whatever I wanted to prove, I started with that. I did some manipulations. And I ended up in a statement, which is zero less than equal to a minus b whole square. I ended up in a statement, which is a true mathematical statement. Therefore, whatever we started off is a true statement. This is like the reverse strategy of proof by contradiction. You start with something and you do all the valid steps. You end up with something that is mathematically true. Therefore, what you started off with must be true. Okay. All right. So this is a strategy of proof, by the way. So come back to this. So I, we just proved the arithmetic mean quadratic mean inequalities for two numbers. Your challenge is to prove it for three numbers. It is true for n numbers. So let's try it for n numbers and use the problem. Okay. So let, let the, let's suppose the n numbers are square root of x1, square root of x2, square root of xn. These are the n numbers divided by n. So you take the average of the n numbers, but we know that it's less than or equal to square root of divided by n square of each of the numbers. So square root of x1 whole square, square root of x2 whole square, up to square root of xn whole square. And then we are almost done because now this is equal to square root of x1 up to xn divided by n. We know the sum of the n numbers is 1. That's given data, right? If you check at the very beginning, the sum of the numbers is 1. So we can just replace this by 1. So square root of 1 by n. So we can just cross multiply now. Let me write it here. Square root of x1 up to square root of xn is less than equals to n times square root of 1 by n which is square root of n. So that's the final answer. Square root of n is the largest possible value of square root of x1 up to square root of xn. Isn't it interesting? This is, I, I mean, in my mind, this is a very, very interesting problem because it can be taken in several directions. Uh, it can go into limits and continuities. Many uh, calculus problems can be devised from here. There is also a geometric interpretation of quadratic mean. So uh, I'll quickly talk about this. This is something that you can really appreciate, I think. There's a geometric way of thinking about it. So suppose A is this segment and B is this segment. And if I take make a circle with A plus B as the diameter, so this is the diameter, diameter is A plus B. Then the radius of this circle, so this is the midpoint, suppose O. Then the radius of this circle is the arithmetic mean of the two numbers. Obviously, radius is half of the diameter. This length here is square root of AB, which is the geometric mean, the geometric mean. So now, from this picture, can you tell me a segment? This is a challenge too. Can you tell me a line segment whose length is equals to the quadratic mean? I have talked about it in the previous videos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Make sure you subscribe. We have beautiful problems on mathematical sciences coming out every week. And uh, if you're interested in our live classroom programs or our softwares, then check the link in the description, get in touch with us, you can be a part of the community. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one, bye.